I want to thank God for being able to make it this Sunday. I really missed it last Sunday, but we had to work, so I thank God that I only had to do that once a year. But, but I don't like it, but but I did miss you all, and I miss church and, and everything. And But I want to thank him for calling me, you know, like Amy was saying last night, for calling me to seeing that I'm worthy enough to do this. No, it, I still get nervous, and I'm, you know, I'd rather, like you all, be sitting back there and listen to somebody else, but I just want to obey him, and I want to please him, so this is what it is, and I want to do it for God, not for myself. So today we're going to be in Ephesians 6, starting at verse 11. And I was, uh, <clears throat> I'll, let, I'll say this before I start reading. Friday night when we had uh, the revival, I went home and I got in the bed and for some reason I couldn't go to sleep and it was like late. I was thinking, God, you know, I've got to go to work tomorrow. I've got to have rest. And all of a sudden, I heard him say, rejuvenate. I sit there for a minute, I said, what kind of word's that? What are you talking about, rejuvenate? So I had to find out what rejuvenate means, because I really didn't know what it meant. I had never heard of that. And it says, give new energy. Other words, refresh, renew, and restore. I said, okay, God. You're going to rejuvenate me for tomorrow because I can't go to sleep, or what is that? No. <laughs> well, he did get he did rejuvenate me to work and stuff. He did give me the strength, and I I thank God for that. But he was talking about something else. Keep that keep that in your mind that that word. Here in a little bit, we'll talk about that. So it says, "Put on the whole armor of God." that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of the world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand." Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Every day Satan throws temptations, worries, cares, at us. It's every day it seems like. And he knows when you're weary. He knows when you're downtrodden. He knows when you've got so much on you. I mean, he knows. He knows. And he's going to tempt you with everything and anything. So what I'm doing this morning might seem silly to some but God said to do this, and God told me to get these four that, that's coming out. So yesterday, I, I called their parents, and I told them, I said, have them define a toy, small toy, that they love playing with. <coughs> that they love to play with. It's something that's special to them. <coughs> And bring it to me, which was last night. So they did. <clears throat> and when they handed it to me, I said, God told you to give that up, so you're giving it to God. I said, no, I'm not God, but you're giving it to God. He tells us to give up things. 
that we probably love. <clears throat> and uh, so they did. So today, <clears throat> I'm going to play Satan's part and then God's part on the other side. David, you know, you know that you love this. You know how awesome it is when you can get all the colors on it. You know that you want this. We have God on the other side saying, no, I told you to put it down. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Put it down. Leave it alone. Don't touch it. Don't look at it. Don't listen. David, look at this. Wouldn't it be awesome if you could get all the colors and you could take it to school in five minutes you can get the colors? You know it would be awesome. Your, kid, your friends at school, what do you think they would say to you if you could do that? David, I told you no. Don't do that. Stop. Stop. Don't look. Don't do that. David. Oh, look, David. And he took it. He took off his helmet of salvation. And then he took it. He wasn't, he wasn't armored up. So Satan got to him. So he feels bad now because he knew that was the wrong thing to do. And he runs from God. He's been serving the Lord for years. And this is every day that he's been hounded about something he loved. And we have another one. <clears throat> Abraham. Look, look at this, Abraham. You like this. And just think, they're selling one. It's a remote control. It flies high and it goes fast. Don't you want that? Don't you want to, to have that be like the rest of the kids at school? No, David, don't listen to him. I told you to throw that down. I told you to walk away from it. Don't, don't go back to it. But, but Abraham, look, you know, all these kids at school has all these. This is for us. I'm just using kids because they're my size, but <laughs> I don't feel intimidated. <laughs> but anyway, this is us in everyday life when God tells us to get rid of something and we, and we do for a while. We walk real good for a while and then this starts happening. Abraham, don't you want to be like the rest of the kids? Don't you want that big Superman that flies real fast? And he's listening to this the whole time. Abraham, please. Don't listen to that voice. Don't listen to it. I told you to put it down. Don't touch it. Don't don't even look at it. I don't care if you're going to get it for somebody else. You don't you don't need to go around that. It's going to keep you out of church. It's going to keep you from reading. It's going to keep you from praying. Because you're going to spend your whole time with that that I told you to put down to begin with because I seen that this was going to happen. Abraham, don't he look good? And he takes it. And he takes it. Because he didn't have his uh, breastplate on. And it got to his heart. Because he wanted to be like the rest of the kids. And it got to his heart. So, gets feeling bad, and he runs off.
I know this probably seems silly to some, but this is how he said to do it, and this is how I'm doing it, so. Let me get on this side of you. Kristen, you've watched YouTube videos of what all you can do with your toy. How many things it can do. Here, take it. Take it. Watch the videos. You don't have to pray. You don't have to pray. Why do you have to pray all the time? You gotta have fun. Kristen, I want you to pray for somebody. I want you to go pray for them now. Now, Kristen, you know that you don't have to do that. You don't have to go right now. Why would you have to go right now? Play with your little toy and get on YouTube videos and see what else you can do with it. Don't it look good? Kristen, please go pray. <laughs> go pray, Kristen. Please, this person needs you to pray for them right now. Kristen, you know you want this. You don't. You don't need to go pray. They'll be okay. Go ahead, take it. And then she gets feeling bad and she runs off. And then we have a little little person that that started started their walk. <clears throat> they haven't been in church long, but still, they're on fire for God. Buggy, do you want this? Pick it up. You know it bounces out of that box. All you do is turn that thing a few times. Do you want it? Do you want it? You can have it. God don't care if you take it. Come on, take it. Here, take it. Bug. I told you not to t not to touch it. It's bad. It's going to keep you from doing what I need you to do. Buggy. Buggy, take this. Look at look at the colors. Look at what's in it. You know what pops out of there. You like that, right? This is the way we need to be. But if you find yourself in this situation right here, okay. if you find yourself in this situation right here that you've that you've given and that you've uh, I guess fell off that rope as they say, there's grace there. There's grace there. And this is where he tries to keep our minds busy and everything from doing what God needs us to do and what He wants us to do. Just like when He tells you to go pray for somebody right then. There's something serious going on that He needs you to pray for this person. Um, so rejuvenate. We'll get back to that. Refresh, renew, and restore. And He gave me this one. And I about fell over Thursday night. Whenever somebody read it, but <laughs> he gave me this the same night. Matthew eleven twenty four through thirty. I thought, well Lord have mercy, I'm going to do it Sunday. <laughs> but I guess he wanted both of us to do it. It says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lonely in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So we're going to have God standing, Jesus standing. I wish I had a thing I didn't know to hold this, but 
He's going to hold his hands out and he'll say, come to me. Come to me. Come back. Come back. You can come back. And you're going to ask God to forgive you. And while... He's got his arms wrapped around us. And he's holding us. That's what we've got to run to. The first sign. The first sign of Satan. And we feel weak. And we feel that we can't go on. That we're going to fall. We need to run to him. Get in under his arms. Let him hold you and let him rejuvenate you. Let him renew you. Let him restore you. Let him get you back to the strong soldier that, that's needed. Don't, don't leave from there until you are strong in God. We all fail. We all do. But we have somebody that's always saying, come on, come back. Come back. Come on. Don't don't sit there. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. You fail, yes, but but make it right. Come on, let's go. And he's there with open arms to hold us, to shield us. Because things get thrown at us. We might hear bad news. We might have deaths. We might have whatever it is that take that takes a toll on you. But we have we have to get full armored. We have to keep all of our armor on. We can't let our guard down. Not one day. Not one minute. Not one hour. We've always got to be standing. Ready. And not give in. Don't listen to him. Just like Buggy. Whenever he come at her. She was strong enough. She was full armored. And she kept saying, no. She must say, get behind me, Satan. Say, get behind me, Satan. Do not sit and listen to one word he's trying to tell you because he's trying to get you to where you're not going to pray, where you're not going to read, you're not going to fast, you're not going to come to church, you start missing church, you're going to continually miss church because it gets easier the more you miss. So keep your full armor on. Don't let your guards down because it's getting wickeder. And it's getting more that he's pushing stuff at you right now. Mostly stuff that you like. It can be the smallest thing. It don't have to be flashy and it don't have to be the big things. It could be little things that you like to do. Like something comes up on a Saturday night. Well, you can go there. It ain't going to hurt to go this time. You go this time, you're going to keep going. Because you're getting weaker. And the devil knows this, so he's going to keep prodding at you. Well, you did it one time. It ain't going to hurt this time. Just keep going. Keep doing it. Stay in the full armor of God. And don't get so overwhelmed with things of this life that don't even matter. Don't get overwhelmed. Put it in God's hands. Lay it at His feet. And you be the strong soldier that he needs you to be in these days for things that's coming. We've got to be the strong soldiers. We've got to stand tall. We've got to be full armored up. Y'all find a place to pray. Give these people a hand clap. They done awesome.